Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show. Now, what I've got beside me here, this big thing here, that is a 16 litre diesel engine. And that is the sort of engine that you have in a big truck. We've been using this technology to move the goods around the world on the, on the ground for the last, I don't know, what, 120 years. They've gradually got bigger and bigger and more and more powerful. The trucks have got enormous. They're absolutely massive now. This is incredibly reliable, solid, good old fashioned, proper engineering. It works, it lasts for hundreds of thousands of miles. It costs an enormous amount to maintain. It costs a vast amount to fuel. It burns through hundreds of thousands of liters of incredibly toxic imported fossil fuel. That's the downside. The upside is, you know, we've been doing them for years and we all understand how diesel engines work. But what if you could take this out of one of those big trucks and replace it with an electric motor and a big load of batteries that you can swap in one minute. It's quicker to charge up an electric truck than it is to fill up a diesel tank. It's faster. That is really exciting. We've come here to Janus Trucks in New South Wales, Australia to see how they do it. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. When we, when we started the, the Janus business model, what we wanted to do was remove the imposts to heavy vehicle electrification. Yeah. So we've developed a system that enables the conversion of every new and used truck in the world. Right. And we remove the impost of battery charge time. We're gonna make this simple. It's gotta work effectively. It's gotta work across all models. We don't wanna be a truck manufacturer. We just wanna re-energize them. Yeah. And that's why we, you know, we've done five different models and makes and we, our system works across all of them. Um, when you have a look at the conversion modules here and in the truck, you'll see that they're the same envelope as a 13 litre diesel engine. Right. Essentially, that means that the Janus conversion module can fit in any class eight or above truck in the world. We'd love the OEMs to say, hey, we just want to use your exchangeable battery technology. Build your electric truck, yeah. put the exchangeable technology yeah. on it that is better for the grid, better for the, the trucking operator, takes away the charging and range anxiety of, oh, I've got to be somewhere, but it's going to take me six hours to charge that vehicle yes. to get the full charge. And, and that's, you know, th this fallacy of fa fast charging. If you're going to put fast charging networks in, you've got to have storage. And that's what our, yep. that's what our charge stations are, also offer is a storage capacity yep. so that it can be utilised when the vehicles come in rather than waiting for that vehicle to turn up. You ready to go? Yeah. Righto. So it's just a simple foot on the brake, yeah. put it into D for drive. Right. It selects gear and we're in gear three and away we go. So just wow. put the accelerator in. It's no clutch, so it's all automatic. Yeah. You've still got to have gears um, right. because of the weight of the vehicle. So this is one of the heaviest road going rated electric trucks in the world. So right. this is 97 ton rated. So wow. this is a double capacity of what the Tesla semi is and, yeah. and what the Volvo, the Volvos are rated to 44 ton, we're rated to 97 ton. 97 ton. So we can tow two trailers, so similar to what we've got in front of right. us there, we can put two trailers on. So this is um, an equivalent 16 speed automatically shifting manual gearbox. Right. So the key difference between trucks and cars um, is a truck needs a lot more torque at the wheels to get off the mark, particularly when you're on steep inclines, right. purely because of the mass yeah. of the vehicle. So all of all Janus vehicles are 90 ton plus rated trucks. Right. So you compare that to your average, for example, Tesla, yeah. you're at about two tons. So it's absolutely necessary to run a gearbox with a large vehicle. Right. So right here we have a 720 horsepower, 540 kilowatt drive, um, which is equivalent to the 16 litre Volvo engine that came out of the truck behind us. Right. right. So this is exactly the same power and torque characteristics at 2000 RPM as the 16 litre Volvo engine that came out of the truck. Right. And to get the, uh, the torque required to move the truck at such high gross vehicle masses to the rear wheels, we run through a conventional truck gearbox. Right. So even though there is a gearbox, it's fully automatic. So it operates in the same manner as an automatic gearbox on a diesel truck does, right. with the exception that you actually don't need a clutch. Because with the electric motor, you've got infinite control over the RPM of the motor we can simply shift to neutral, speed match and shift to the next gear seamlessly. Right. But then the other 
thing is, I just want to really point this out, is that you're, that, you know, I've been in lots of kind of, in big inverted commas, experimental vehicles where people have, you know, converted things, but that this is in use, commercially yeah, yeah. in use. Yes. So there's a company using this Correct. truck Correct. to deliver sand and they get paid to do it. Correct. So it's just so it's the first it's just being used all the time. It's the first truck in commercial operations of this of a class eight in Australia. Right. In commercial operations as we speak today. And I mean roughly what range can it do then when it's on on a full look between I suppose it depends on so many things. Yeah. It does de depends on um, depends on uh, the topography where it's operating what load is what the load yeah. is you know is it is it in a space where they can get um, lots of regenerative braking right all of those sorts of things so um, it, it, it all it all basically comes back to what it's towing so somewhere between four to six hundred kilometers right um, depends on the regenerative braking some 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 applications only around 300 kilometers because right. of it's load factor weight and you've um, got a hill yeah, yeah the other side like the two big factors that affect your range is um, is your rolling resistance so how many axles you're towing on the ground right and then how big is the brick you're trying to push through the air yeah like this truck has not got a lot of wind efficiency in it, it it's very you know it's yeah. got shiny things all over it yeah. it's got a big wing foil yeah it doesn't need to be doing that so it it, it averages sort of around that 1.5 to 1.7 kilowatt hours per kilometer right yeah that's a good way yeah. of judging it so i mean yeah for people who don't know i mean an efficient electric car will get between four and a half and five miles so about seven or eight kilometers per kilowatt hour sure. this uses one and a half kilowatt hours per oh, kilometer right yep. so what i'm leaning on is a battery pack and what used to be here were two enormous diesel fuel tanks but this has replaced them this is 620 kilowatt hours of electricity that is about eight tesla model threes in just this pack and then it weighs uh, 2.08 tons so there's two of these, there's another battery pack, the same size on the other side of the truck. So essentially when you take the diesel engine, fuel, um, fuel tanks, fuel load, exhaust systems, intercooler, et cetera, et cetera, you remove all that out of the truck, you're moving right. about three and a half tonnes of weight. Right. And then when you put the Janus system back on, you're actually putting about four tonnes back in. Right. So you're about half a tonne to a tonne heavier than your conventional diesel at the moment. The cost of running this, driving it a kilometre, has got to be cheaper than a diesel one. I mean, am I way out of line there? No, that... no, you're, you're right. So you're looking, you know, if you're talking apples for apples with energy, you're looking at about 60 cents a kilometre with a uh, electric vehicle, right. as opposed to a dollar a kilometre with a uh, with a diesel vehicle at the moment with current fuel prices. Right, and that is and that is if you charge it from the Australian grid of paying grid prices per kilowatt hour. Correct. Right. Correct. So even that is cheaper. But if you can make your own. Fuel. Yeah, you hook it to solar, hook it to wind, yeah. get into renewables, get behind the meter, get off grid. Yeah. Um, you know, look at warehouses and, and put the put the uh, solar on the top of the warehouses. Yeah. You know, you're bringing that fuel cost down to about six cents a kilowatt hour, as opposed to about twenty five to twenty six right. in the Australian grid delivered at the moment. Yeah. So it, it has significant economic benefits for the fleet operator, but not only for the fleet operator, but we we then start to get energy sovereignty and energy security back in our country. Yeah. Because we've got we've got an abundance of renewable energy in this country. Um, we import 95% of all of our fuel for this country. Wow, really? So that when much? You, I didn't realise it, it was that much. It's 95%. Wow. There's only about 14 days of diesel in this country at any one time. Wow. Um, because there's physically not the tank storage for it. And yeah. we only produce about 5% of it ourselves. The rest of it's on ships. So, we're just coming back into the charge no, station here. So you can see yeah, there's, a, there's a battery. There's a battery in the charge station right. ready to go for us. Wow. Um, we'll just pull up and we can do the bat we show you a battery exchange. With exchangeable batteries, you, bring you can charge them when it's good. Well, you charge when renewables are in production. Yeah. You charge out of peak, so you're not putting an extra load on the grid. You're actually utilising the grid infrastructure when it's not in full use. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in Australia, we have a grid a, a peak between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning, and right. then another peak at around uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon to about 9 p.m. at night. The rest of the time, that infrastructure is completely underutilised. Right. So we've got to be smart about how we do this. Instead of having to put billions of dollars into electrical grids, how do we use that infrastructure more efficiently? Yeah. Same principle with the truck. This truck's 10 years old. Right. And it's fully electric. Right. Um, it's a 2000 and 2012, sorry, it's 11 years old this year. Right. It's a 2012. Right. It had done 1.3 million kilometres when we got it. Right. You wouldn't wow. think it was no. a 1.3 million kilometre truck. So it's a second life. It's about using, utilising infrastructure and assets and, get, and repurposing and, and keep that circular economy going round and round. 
there's only a 5% manufacturing capacity in, in um, vehicles, um, in, in OEMs around the world. So right. they can only ever manufacture 5% of the total fleet. Right, I so see what you mean. So if we're okay. going to try and hit targets of 2030 and 2050 zero emissions... We've got to use what we've got. You, you, you've got to yeah. reuse it. And you've also got the carbon debt for the manufacturing of this original vehicle. Yeah. And typically, the average age of every prime mover around the world is between 13 to 15 years of age. Right. So when, when you look at that and, and you look at it and go, well... 13 to 15 years of age, they've typically had two to three engine rebuilds right. in that period of time. Right. Um, because every 800,000 to a million kilometres or, you know, 600,000 miles, 700,000 miles, they need an engine rebuild. Right. So wh rather than rebuild the engine, Just take let's it take it out and put yeah. it, let's put an electric one in. I mean, essentially, electric motors are protected in their software, so it's almost impossible to um, over overstress these motors. Right. The temperature protected, they're power protected and so forth. So the motors realistically have, you know, a, 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 a multi-decade life. Right. Right. So th there's no issue with maintenance of the motors, no usable serv serviceable parts. Right. Um, so we're expecting multi-decade lives out of the motor and, and multi-million kilometre lives. Right. Wow. The gearboxes, because there's no vibration and heat coming back from a diesel engine, yeah. we expect that the life of the gearbox will more than double. Right. So generally on a gearbox, you re-race a gearbox at about a million kilometres, maybe 1.2, 1.5 million kilometres. But um, because there's no shock load coming back through from the clutch, right. there's no heat from the engine, there's no vibrate, there's no high frequency vibration from, from the, the, from from the, the pistons engine. essentially yeah, yeah. reciprocating, we expect that um, you know, we'll double the life of a gearbox. Right. What you can see in the screen, the only main modification is the screen that goes right. in, the, in the vehicle. So that gives us uh, motor speed, what gear we're in, and the percentage of charge of the battery. So right. it's got 24% in it. Right. But what we're then able to do then is jump, and we can see our regenerative torque, and we use the, the existing engine brake switch in the truck right. as, the, as the regenerative setting. So we've got three set settings, so you've got a light, uh, a medium and a, and a high right. and a high duty. So we we've got 2,800 newton meters of regenerative torque there, right. um, set as the highest setting. So it will stop you on a on a 10, 15 percent grade. It'll pull the wow. truck up to a stop. Wow. So with trucks, it's it's not only nice to regenerate brake to regain power. It's actually yeah. necessary because you have to um, assist the truck in braking, particularly on long downhill yeah. um, uh, declines. Um, so this motor, for example, will return 540 kilowatts of energy to the battery pack. The significant saving just in operating an electric vehicle in maintenance over a diesel vehicle is huge. You know, a typical vehicle doing metropolitan deliveries around 14 to 16 cents a kilometre right. for maintenance for a diesel. Just for the maintenance. Just that's for the, the maintenance. That's the thing that we don't think about. Yeah. And, and the downtime. Yeah. So that's the other part. When you're doing a major engine oil service, it's six it's hours working. off the road. Yeah. There's no engine oils to change on these. Right. So we're looking at um, maintenance at below four cents a kilometre right. for an electric vehicle. And yeah. you felt the regenerative braking when we went for it's a drive. It's phenomenal. You don't touch yeah. the brakes. No. So you take that into equation, yeah. it, you know, it, it's just got so many benefits for the transport industry. Yeah. And that flows on then to us as a community as well too, because, you know, think about the noise and the pollution that we save in, in concentrated, yeah. in, in, you know, residential areas. Yeah. Um, greater delivery scope of windows as well too, because less noise, 24-hour delivery yeah. cycles into, 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 into suburban areas. Yeah. It just makes a significant change to the whole logistics and community. And I mean, is there, a, have you got a kind of rough budget of what it costs to do, to convert one? To do a conversion, you're looking at about 150 to $175,000 Australian at the moment. Right. Uh, depending on the uh, depending on the type of vehicle, right. that doesn't include your batteries. The batteries are uh, is basically energy as a service because the dearest thing on an electric vehicle is the batteries. Right. So but you don't sell the batteries to the to, to the truck. Company. The truck the truck owner can own their batteries if they want. But right. I say to them, why do you want to own an asset where there's millions of dollars, and well, actually probably closer to billions of dollars being spent on battery cell technology? Yeah. And limit yourself to that technology today. The beauty of our system is, is as a new cell chemistry comes available, we just you put it in put the it box. In there. Right. One of the things we'll be doing over the next 12 to 24 months is installing uh, robotic charge and change stations right, as well. Right. And that will reduce the change time, the battery swap time to sub one minute. Wow. So the truck will drive into essentially uh, a, a building, uh, driver will exit the vehicle into what we call a safe area just right. for um, you know, good governance. Yeah. Um, and robots will literally pull the battery, swap it with a full battery, and then rack the old, the, you know, the depleted battery. Right and the driver will then be allowed to, to re-enter the vehicle. Wow. 
but that whole process will take less than a minute. Wow. Now the great thing about our batteries, people say, well, what are you going to do with them when they're finished in trucks? Well, we just take that out and it's because it's a fixed capacity, we'll be at 80% yeah. uh, capacity in that battery. We use it as a grid storage yeah. battery, we use it as static storage. It can be easily reutilised in other areas where we need to have static storage, grid support, FCAS, backup batteries. You, you think about replacing diesel generator, diesel, diesel backup power yeah. underneath hospitals and underneath um, uh, high-rise buildings yeah. uh, for fire systems. Just put, put our battery in there and yeah. just feed it off the grid when it makes sense, when yeah. the power makes sense.